guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome to what? Season three of The Money Zone on ripradionetwork.com, guys. I'm your host, Felicia Day, the accountability accountant, guys. I am so excited to be back with you guys after tax season in this perfect time and in the studio because we always take like a little mini hiatus. And so that's exactly what we did. Um, so me and my team were able to regroup and now we are back for season three. And I am so excited to start this season off with an amazing guest. We're talking about how to maintain, um, how um, you, how our uh, guest was able to maintain um, through the pandemic, through coronavirus, um, in the wedding industry. So this is the opportunity for all of you that is entrepreneurs, um, just to know multiple things. You will never have it easy. You will always have to adjust, pivot, make changes. So our guest tonight is a prime example of how to pivot and keep afloat during um, the pandemic. So guys, we have Laura Fault. I don't, hopefully I didn't, hopefully I didn't butcher her last name. Um, coming on. Um, so what I advise you guys to do, take notes because this is your entrepreneurship lessons, full effect. You want to get your notepad, your pen, and then do me a favor and share the video with one of your biz besties or on your social media platform. Let them know. Velocity Day is back and we are in full action. So guys, if you have not subscribed to our mailing list, go to bit.ly forward slash TMZ get notified. TMZ get notified. Um, join our mailing list so you can know about our upcoming guests and what we have going on. So, guys, what we're going to do, we're going to take a two-minute break to get our guests on, and then we'll be back.
guys, welcome back to the Money Zone. I'm your host, Velocity, the accountability accountant, guys. So, you know, guys, we're kind of swiftly coming out of um, the pandemic. Businesses are reopening, service based businesses are starting to get back into their offices. Uh, we're no longer fighting for uh, toilet paper and paper towels and Lysol and things like that. So, guess what? What better time to talk about? how service-based businesses were able to maintain during this pandemic, right? So we have Laura Fox. She's the co-owner alongside with her husband, um, and they own the award-winning Best of 2021 wedding vendors called L&B Concepts. L&B Concepts, guys, is located here in Maryland, and they are a luxury event rental company, okay? And they have a creative branch which provide luxury, high-end quality party rentals, just like all of those party rentals that you see on IG and everywhere else. All of the designers come and rent um, their stuff. Okay. Um, LNB helps ensure parties are a success by working hand in hand with event planners. Okay. They're computer generated event planners and on site evaluations with its extensive selection of high quality rental um, equipment that is sourced from all over the globe. Um, so, all of those fancy, like, um, themed type parties. It sounds like Laura and her husband can definitely um, put those type of events and weddings on. So, guys, help me welcome um, Laura of l &B Concepts. Hi, everyone. Hey, Laura. Trump, she sound low. Is it me? Um, is it better? Cool. Just a little bit. It's getting a little bit better. Okay. Is it better? He said it's a little low. Let me increase the volume. He said it might be a mic level. Any better? Mm -hmm. Better? Is that better? Yes. Yes. So, hey guys. So, welcome. Allow me, um, help me welcome Laura to the Money Zone, guys. Okay, Laura. So, look, outside of the technical difficulties, I want to say thank you so much for joining me on tonight's first episode back into season three of the Money Zone. And it's a really good time to start the conversation where we are because many entrepreneurs like yourself and myself, we provide services, right? And honestly, service-based businesses were hit hard. People were still buying products from, you know, online businesses and Amazon and everywhere else. But service-based businesses had to really figure out how to stay afloat, how to manage. So before we even begin, what made you start off and how did you get into the wedding business? Well, the way I got into the wedding business was from our wedding. Um, we had a thousand guests at our wedding and yes, and we were able to coordinate the wedding in such a way that everything started on time. Everything started on time. Everybody was able to be fed. It was such a beautiful wedding and we had um, word from all the attendees encouraging us to start something of this nature. Wow. And also because we had a thousand guests, it was somewhat difficult getting the number of chairs and plates that were needed. So that's how we really got into the industry. Wow. And you know what they say, we actually can utilize the internal skill sets that we have that we don't even really know that we possess and then turn that into a profitable, scalable business. So I commend you and your husband for seeing that opportunity because people can chime in your ear, can say what they want to say and say, oh, it's a great idea. It's really up to you guys to step up and say, you know what, I'm willing to risk it. So as you guys 
had the amazing wedding. Congratulations on the marriage and stuff like that. So once you guys got over, how quickly did you jump and start the business? Or did you take a few months, a few years? Actually, it took me three years. It took us three years to set up the business. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 So it took... You have to understand the market. In any business, you have to understand your market before you do engage. Do your mm -hmm. own research before you engage. So in spite of the fact that we were encouraged by, you know, the attendees and friends to start something of this nature, we decided to do our own research to mm -hmm. see if that's what we wanted to engage in. I was a nurse for 14 years and I had to wow. to engage in this business. Wow. And you know, nurses make good money. So I understand it, it takes a while to now. And, but you know, I really appreciate the fact that you said, and guys, she said a core thing today. She said she did research. They didn't just jump out there. They went and looked and saw whether or not it fits, you know, into their lifestyles. And if that's something that is really of interest for her and her husband and their family. And then she, then she jumped out. She didn't just quit her job overnight. She took some time. So when you guys see those memes and when you see those posts that say quit your nine to five and everything, I truly don't think that that's the right path for each and every one of us. And, you know, you have to kind of, you know, do your research and things like that. Okay, so now let me fast forward. We know how you started your company. Um, we know that you, you know, you got into it based off just an internal type of skill set that you and your husband possess. So now when the pandemic hit, what was your mindset at that point? Were you nervous? Were you scared? Were you instantly in business mode, ready to pivot? What what was going on in the month of March 2020 in your mind? I would say I didn't panic or we did not panic as much because before you start a business, they always say do your research. Yes. And you should always have some cash flow in the back. Always, mm. always seek the advice from your accountant to make sure that you have that cash flow just in case something happens. So when the pandemic hit, we have extremely good workers. Yes. So we definitely had to do whatever mm -hmm. it takes to keep our employees. We knew we had some cash flow to hold on to them, but we did not know how long mm -hmm. the was going to last. So I, we really relied on our faith in God to show us a way and which he did. Uh, and you know, I love it um, because, you know, here on the money zone, I'm an advocate that I don't even know how um, entrepreneurs that don't believe in God or don't have faith, how do they even manage to make money, sustain and be in the right state, you know, right state of mind. Um, so basically, guys, she said some key points. She said that she basically reviewed her cash flows and they had some cash flows. They had some savings. They had some money put to the side. She also consulted with her accountant. And so that goes into the conversation that we're presently having right now is that I don't care how small your business is. You need that advice. You need that guidance. So at that point, so you contacted your accountant. You wasn't sure how long your reserves were going to last you. And at that point, what exactly did you and your husband do at that point, Laura? Well, at that point, um, everyone realized that at that point, um, businesses were shorting down, which of course the whole U.S. economy was affected. So what we decided to do, I'm somebody who I've gone, I'm very familiar with Asia. So um, during that period of the pandemic, there was a huge shortage in PPEs, masks, yeah. gloves and stuff. And um, my husband is an emergency room physician. So I could not see him using same mask and also being a nurse, reusing mask um, because of the shortage. So we used um, our contacts in Asia. Uh, we leveraged our, leveraged our network in Asia to secure some PPEs like masks, um, yes. gowns, which we brought in and um, we donated to his hospital. Um, little did we know that that was an opening 
that we were solving a problem but creating an opportunity. Wow. So um, in that case, it goes to um, explain that in business, you shouldn't only focus on one thing, but do not engage on everything. You always have to keep your eyes open. So when we donated the PPEs and saw the, an opportunity to expand yeah. our business, uh, fortunately, having the faith in God without that fear, uh, my husband was contacted by procurement agents in his um, hospital if he could contact me to help in, you know, in sourcing out some of the PPEs. And that's how we got into the PPE um, business and we stayed afloat. Wow. Okay, Laura, you and your husband need to pat yourselves on the back. Guys, for all of you that's watching on Instagram and stuff, and you probably did not hear Laura correctly, the epitome of entrepreneurship, her and her husband, first of all, guys, she clearly said she didn't panic. She didn't flinch. She said she had that faith. Remember, your faith can just be the size of a mustard seed. It doesn't have to be so huge. And her level of faith allow her to just, you know what, take a step back, evaluate what's going on. And she used her connections. She used her resources. You know how to say don't burn any bridges. You don't know who you're going to need later down the line. And if her and her husband didn't maintain those relationships, her L and B concepts may not even be around today. So basically, guys, this is the epitome. I, I, that's all I can say. This is the epitome of entrepreneurship because her being in the wedding industry could have discouraged her and her husband for even jumping out there and going beyond the donation aspect of handling and dib dibbling and dabbling in the PPP um, market space. I pat yourself on the back. I, I, I don't think the average wedding planner, event planner would have even considered it. They probably would have thought of something else, but not number one, donating it. It would have automatically been a money move so that they would have missed that opportunity. So guys, this always goes to show you that it's not always the dollar that you're going to get out of every transaction. It may be for a future contract or a future connection or just access to a network. Oh my goodness. Look guys, I'm getting excited. The conversation is getting live. Guys, do me one um favor head over on instagram and follow lmb concepts it is lb underscore concepts on instagram follow her and her husband's platform um because if she was able to pivot here in business then you know guys she's going to put together a well prestige type of um wedding event or assist whoever is planning your event because that level of attention to detail and the connections remember event planners is all about connections she won't be able to get the best equipment for you if she don't have somebody on 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 speed dial See, so you guys probably wonder how all of these beautiful events occur. It's really about the space that Laura and her husband occupy and their relationships and connections. So in the end, if they didn't go and connect with China, um, Asia, get the resources, they wouldn't be around to serve and prepare these beautiful weddings. So, oh, okay, Laura. All right. So we got the opportunity. Um, and so now what happened? Did you instantly convert that over into a long-term PPE um, supply contract? Or did that venture into you possibly working with and doing their events and things like that? So uh, how did it all unfold? Yes, so from that, um, we had procurement agents calling us from the government, from the, you know, from the states, from the hospitals, uh, to procure, you know, to source out um, yes. PPEs from, from, for them. So we brought in millions, I would say millions, wow. yes. We supplied Thank you. about 2 million gloves, the mask to um, Maryland, 3 million to Wisconsin, Montana, a bunch of the other states. So that right there opened up another business for us, which we opened up in April called LBF Medical. What? <laughs> Oh my goodness, guys. And 
Oh, okay, Lord, just talk, just talk, just talk. I, I, I'm taking my notes. I'm taking my notes so I can connect the dots. Um, okay, guys, so now we're at the phase where they're now offering medical supplies. Okay, so I'm with you, Laura. Yes, so we got into medical supplies and I would say that was the busiest time in my entire life because I was going for 48 hours without any sleep. Oh my we, God. Yes, because you work with Asia at night. They are 12 yeah. hours ahead. So I am up at night sourcing out, you know, the PPEs. And then during the day, I'm getting numerous calls um, from procurement agents, from the government, from the military, you name it, I was getting it to an extent that I had to turn down some. I would get wow. a request for five million, but I know I can only supply two million. So it was the busiest time in my life. And then all of our staff, we had all of our staff at home. So because of the contactless uh, precautions that the government had instituted, I was basically doing that. And my mm. husband had to take two weeks off his busy schedule to assist me because I was so overwhelmed. <laughs> oh my goodness, guys. Okay, so now we had we they started off with LMB concepts, completely pivoted during the pandemic. Now we're talking about LNB medical supplies. And so now is all business fully functioning and operating at this present moment? Everything is functioning right now and we are juggling both. Wow. Yes. Wow. Wow. So now when the pandemic hit, and then after this question, guys, we're going to go ahead on and take a quick break, give Laura some time to give her a sip of water, adjust. You know, I know the excitement from mine, it might be a little too much, um, but I just love to hear these stories, guys. And these are everyday people out there risking things and having the faith in God and knowing when to move and shake. And I just love the fact that you guys, you probably missed out what she said. She said she ended up working almost 48 hours at times with no sleep. Sleep. And most of us say that we want those opportunities, Laura, but are we willing to put in the work that you did, even taking her husband from him being in the ER, then look, we needed him there too at the same time. And for him to be forced to come, not forced, but willing to come and help her so she can now um, pivot and get better systems in place and, you know, and, and, and handle it and handle everything. Are you willing to not sleep for two, three days at a time? Are you willing to discipline yourself? Are you willing to hire the accountant so you can know where your cash flow stands? Are you willing to put in the work that Laura and her husband did um, during that time and now to be able to sustain, pivot and grow and scale and then have multiple businesses at this present moment? So Laura, when you were hit with the um, thought process of, okay, all righty, I have to now source um, these millions of um, face masks, PPE equipment and things like that. From a money standpoint, where did the investment come from? Because you, did you have to pay it up front? Did you, not to get into the logistical details of it, but I just want the audience to kind of understand that when you're hit with this type of opportunity, you may have to be creative. You may have to borrow. You may have to go in your savings. You may have to negotiate. At that point, when you had to source, when you had the opportunity to source those means of PPE equipments, what cash flow opportunities were at that moment? What opportunities did you have pertaining to cash flows and assisting you in purchasing them? That is where the cash reserve came in handy. Yes. Because majority of the government contracts is payment upon delivery. Okay. So you have to deliver the, you know, deliver the items and then you get paid. No doubt your money is going to come, but you have to pay for the stuff up front. So we were able to pay up front and we kept our fingers crossed because the first supplies came in faster than we expected uh, through Japan Airlines. Mm -hmm. And once it got to Maryland, within 24 hours, we were able to get our money back, which we doubled. So there we had more income. We kept our capital and we used the profit now to continue. 
Yes. Okay, guys. So Laura just gave you an example of when financial discipline, and I'm going to coin that word, when financial discipline pays off. What if Laura wasn't disciplined enough to have a cash reserve? What if she wasn't disciplined to um, be able to see where opportunities are and adjust her finances accordingly? If you're going to end up footing the bill for means of any type of equipment, you may have to sacrifice yourself financially for a couple of weeks until you are paid. So guys, when these opportunities come, remember you preparation meets opportunity. If they didn't have that money, Laura and her husband would have probably had to go borrow from the bank or borrow from friends and family, which would have tapped into their profits down the line. Um, she probably wouldn't have been able to even pay um, for the uh, PPE equipment immediately because she had to funnel and pull the money together. Um, she had to probably go and beg and give a percentage of equity of her organization. So guys, this is where having an accountant and solid financial discipline comes into place. And then when opportunities like Laura situation come, she was able to pivot. So I just, I'm going to give you your flowers. You guys did that thing. And I'm just so proud because I remember in March when this happened, I went instantly online trying to give strategy and help these small businesses pivot and was giving them ideas on what they can possibly do. And many of them messaged me months later. They just ended up getting stuck and confused and, you know, they couldn't move. They didn't know what to do. And so just you being able to continue to move forward, um, it's a blessing. And then you helped us. In Maryland, I probably had one of your masks, girl. Didn't even know. Um, helping us here to maintain and this. You so you had um, our governor looking all fake. He was like, "Oh, Maryland have our um, two million." <laughs> I remember when Governor Hogan came on. He was like, "Oh yeah, Maryland was able to get some shipped over on a private jet and all of that." I was like, "Okay, okay." So look, guys, Laura probably had a hand in that part too, guys. Um, so this is exciting. So guys, what I advise you to do, head over, go and follow LMB underscore concepts on um, Instagram. Follow her. Let her know you found her here on the Money Zone. We're going to take a quick little five-minute break. Give me and Laura some time to get ourselves together and use some time to recap for your notes and to make sure that you've taken down that you need faith. Cash flows, that means you need to be financially disciplined for opportunities. You need to then just kind of digest the conversation that we've had right now. And then when we come back, um, we'll dive in part of the show, guys. And so just share the video, recap your notes, and we'll be right back. Your refund is not something extra, okay? That's another thing. Y'all see here, not even understanding that if you broke, you do need to find somebody to help you with your coins. I don't know why y'all think that accountants and financial advisors only work for the rich. Hell no. Nah. I had to financially advise myself to even get to where I am now. Shit, when I was getting refunds, I had to financially advise myself on how to use the refunds. I really did. I had Brim. I was what? Brim was born 2012. Started the business 2011 August. I got my refund and I put it right back into the business. I didn't have employees then. I didn't have a big office. I didn't have all of the stuff that we got right now. Right? I put it back into the business. So I had to financially advise myself too. So regardless of how much money you have or how much money you don't have, are you being smart with what you have? Are you going to do right by with, with what you have? Make some investments. Save some stuff. Start your business. Do some things. But the last thing that I want you guys to do is just fuck it up. And that's been one of my drinks. I'm just, you know. That's my little Drake song now. No, that's the last thing I want you guys to do because we're still treading light waters right now, y'all. I don't know 
when we're going to get out of all of this mess. And I don't see anything happening overnight because there's too much policies happening. They haven't even really niched down and say who deserved what or who's supposed to do what. Biden is putting in so many executive orders and doing so much that they're blindly not even seeing that we're developing more and more problems as we're growing, as we're moving. But that's another story. We talk about taxes. Do not file your taxes via TurboTax. I know you cheapskates and all of y'all like flush it. Here you go again with this nonsense. Y'all know every year I say it because I want you guys to do better. And let me give you a real live example of why TurboTax is never really that satisfying for all of you. Okay, number one. I had a client call. Um, they were already paid their invoice and moved forward. When they called the office, well, they, Randy called them and scheduled a meeting with me. Scheduled a meeting with me, right? And so the first thing that the individual and his wife was saying was that they're not certain that they've been able to maximize. matters but most importantly being you and staying true to yourself is what really matters Hey guys, and we are back. So if you don't know, we are talking with Laura, the co-owner with her husband of L&B Concepts located here in Largo, Maryland. Well, I said Largo, Maryland. That's for my office. Okay. In Maryland, guys, um, she, we were talking about her and her, her story is the typical entrepreneurship story, guys. Whereas though, it, you know, you start the business you hit with the situation. However, as entrepreneurship, this is why they call us entrepreneurs. We're able to adjust, pivot, and actually prosper in tough times. And that's exactly what she did during the pandemic. And I'm going to just give it to her. She just had our governor tooting his horn over here, showing off, okay, doing his thing, setting the bar when it comes to um, um, acquisition uh, well, acquiring the PPP equipment for the state of Maryland. I'm going to just give, get, I don't know, you did it, I'm giving it to you because I think that's where you got it from. Um, but guys, so basically we were talking about before we went to break, when the opportunity came, what she was able to do, uh, what her financial discipline allow her to do um, in terms of investing into the PPP equipment and putting the money up front. And I was going through different situations that someone else that didn't have the financial discipline that she has may have been in. Um, so right before that, um, Laura told her she, she whipped out her cash reserves, paid for it, 
and was able to recover her money down the line, which equates to me, you, her being financially disciplined. So now we're going into the segment, second segment of the show, guys, where now we want to be able to connect the dots between what was it like? Because remember, guys, she said she was up for 48 hours, 48 hours at a time, you know, talking overseas. At that given moment, if you can give us maybe two business lessons that you were able to take from being in the pandemic, talking through um, in different languages, different countries and connecting and being resourceful at that given point, if you can just give any entrepreneur two points of advice from that situation, would you say to us? say um you always have to keep your eyes open you always have to make sure you keep the connections do not burn your bridges mm. never burn your bridges because and always build good relationships with um the businesses that you're working with overseas because when it comes to time of need they put you on top because they already have uh, have they already have a relationship with you, so they are able to fulfill your need first before working down the list. Mm. So always build good relationships out, no matter what it is. Do not burn your bridges. And so basically, it sounds like the old boys club. You they're gonna call the friends first, and, and if you're connected friend of the friend, you're going to get the second call. And if you're the third friend of the friend, you're going to get, if you're not connected at all, you just have to get whatever's left out there. And so guys, how many times do we look at situations and be like, oh, that was supposed to be mine or, oh, you know, why I don't want to connect with this person. Like in the back of your mind, I know a lot of people go, I coach my clients. I hear, I, I get it from every angle. However, it may not be meant for you to get the opportunity so they can make the connection and they connect you for what your opportunity lags. So you guys have to, you know, be comfortable and say, you know what, when it's your time, it is your time. And when it was Laura's time, she had the cash reserves and the connections to be able to move forward with, um, um, the transactions and be able to pivot and be in business in, in the way that she is now. So my next question to you, Laura, will be, how have connections helped you in the wedding industry or um, in terms of your service-based business? The connections have helped me a lot. I personally, everything we own in, the, um, in our warehouse, I personally went to the factories. I know all of the factories where we got every single item. I know what they are made of. So I have a lot of connections in Asia, personally. Mm. Wow. Wow. So guys, did you hear what she said? She said, in addition to, um, well, she said she's connected, number one. But she also said that she's able to see whatever her designs or whatever she may want for a client or whatever she want to add to her book of business, her catalog she can go and actually see it in production and follow through. So basically, Laura, if you see one of those, because I remember those king and queen throne cheers were extremely popular. Um, you know, I don't know if they're still popular to this day now, but they were very, very popular. So let's use that product, for example. If you wanted to create a different type of throne, you have, well, throne cheer, do you have the connections to go right on over to Asia and give them your designs, and then they will build your unique throne for you? I do. Wow. And then, guys, the event planners will rent from Laura, correct? Correct. See? Can you see? So connections, connections, connections. So, guys, if the event planners isn't connected, then they won't be able to put the most over-the-top, unique, themed-out event and that can set the bar and allow them to charge more if they aren't connected with individuals like Laura. So basically what we're saying is that just like Laura said, she said she was two things I asked her that she will tell us 
not to do or to do while you know trying to level up and grow our businesses and she said never to burn bridges so how many of you that's watching this show right now have had an opportunity or been had a friendship or some type of access somewhere but you overdid it you overstepped you did too much you turned the people off or you went behind their back you did something girl you did something and then in the end you lost the ability to pick up the phone and call that individual so i want to just say you know what forget about that time now focus on the relationships that you have ahead of time so laura we're kind of winding down um for the show so i want to give the floor to you is it anything in particular that you want to talk about in terms of connections cash flows and um pivoting in entrepreneurship well what i'll tell um, anybody is trust is very important in business and in the event industry there is a lot of competition um we basically do rentals and in the event industry, I would say you should collaborate instead of compete. Hmm. By collaborating, you build bridges. By competing, you get short-term gains. So it doesn't matter what business it is, you should be able to collaborate because you just never know where an opportunity might hit. Also, you should be able to have cash flow because as an entrepreneur, especially here in the United States, once you have an EIN number for your business and it's registered, you can diversify. You can do a lot of things. Stay on top of your registration, pay your taxes, because when an opportunity hits, you don't know if it's a government opportunity. You need to have all your docs in place. Mm -hmm. it might, you might strike a deal, or break a deal. Yeah. Stay focused. Listen to your accountant because accountability helps evaluate your business. Guys, I will, I will cut that part out right there. That's going to be the first slide. Grace, you see this? That's the, that's the slide right there. And it's so funny because that goes right into my last question that I want to start asking every guest going forward. How has accounting and accountability helped you um, in your business? The way it's helped in, my, in our business is to be in control of our, <laughs> of our finances. And... I would say you, your accountant, to me, you look at it second to God because then he or she helps you to know the performance of your business. And by you knowing the performance of your business, you know where to adjust and where yeah. not to adjust. And you get an idea of where to spend more money and where not to spend more money. Hmm. You know what? Laura, you just hit the nail on the wall. And I have the utmost struggle with brown, black, African, American, African, getting our people in general to really get that concept of what you just said by you guys having your accounting. And I said this for six years straight, but just because it came out of your mouth from the entrepreneur standpoint, it might resonate with the audience a little bit better, guys. But she said exactly, I've been saying it for years. By you doing your accounting, it allows you to be in control. Regardless of what the amount is, even if you only have a hundred bucks in the bank account, at least because you've done your accounting, you know it's a hundred there rather than the individual that's sitting there pondering oh my gosh is it enough money a hundred dollars to clear this out is it fifty dollars having your accounting allows you to be completely in control and so now my second part of that question how has accountability assisted you in helping you build your business or grow it's assisted especially like building the lbf medical part of it if we did not listen to our accountant, if we did not have that cash flow in reserve, we shouldn't have been able to engage in the PPE business. Wow. wow. And LBF Medical shouldn't have been born. We shouldn't have been able to stay afloat 
more importantly, to keep our employees who mm -hmm. were more like family because it was, I mean, it wasn't their fault that the pandemic hit. So that has been um, very important to us um, to be able to keep our employees by at least by being accountable. Yeah. Because yeah. right now it's so difficult for a lot of people to find employees or rehire yeah. because they let their employees go. But when you treat your employees, you respect your employees, it's a two-way street. Mm, they mm, do mm. whatever it takes to be with you because they run your business. Yes. They are bosses for real. They're the bosses for real. Exactly. Oh, my goodness. So, Lord, this was an amazing conversation. Um, I go into it so blindly every time, and it just seems like I, I enjoy the conversations more and more and more because the more and more our individuals scale up and grow, the more you guys are the prime example of what it takes. It's no more Googling oh, what it takes to build a business. No, she actually said that you might have nights that you may not sleep for 48 hours, but this is what we signed up for, guys. We also have to have that financial discipline so when those opportunities come, we are ready to put our name on the dotted line and close those deals and build those connections. And then she also said something very, very important, which was the whole purpose and concept of the show, was that connections can pay the bills and catapult your business from you being a nobody to you supplying the governor of Maryland for all of their PPE equipment and being able to use that to now invest and go further. And so another thing she said early on for all of you guys that tuned in late, and I do advise each and every one of you guys to go ahead on and head over to anywhere um, a podcast are being hosted. Um, the Money Zone is on there. Um, so after 24 hours from tonight's show, you will be able to catch the recap of tonight's show. But early on, Laura was basically saying that when she started this, she didn't know um, exactly where everything was going to go. But the fact that she had faith, the fact that she had the financial discipline, the fact that she had connections, connections and connections and relationships, she was able to be where she is right now. So what I just want to give you guys two action steps tonight, and I'm going to start doing this on the show, write down all of the people you are connected with and what they do. Write down each person you know of that's in your phone and write down beside that list, what exactly do they do? And anytime an opportunity come, send them that referral. Anytime a connection come, reach out, do an um, introduction email, let them know, hey, I think you might, you know, work well with this person or be a resource, but just be mindful, you know, have some discernment, but go ahead on and let's start building relationships again and connecting with individuals because just like Laura did, it can change your life. So now rather than what a lot of wedding planners, not even wedding planners, um, rent to uh, companies like hers and stuff, a lot of them didn't sustain. Um, and, you know, so she did. But then lastly, she also said, having a relationship with your accountant is key. Many of you did not get the opportunity to get the loans legitimately and get the EIDL because you didn't have your accounting in order. But if you were prepared, like all of my clients were last year that have their bookkeeping and stuff, they were able to qualify for the EIDLs. They were able to get the PP, uh, PPP loans. They were able to get funding and financing opportunities. So they are now, the majority of all of my clients are tripling their revenue and they're scaling up to millions of dollars now because the opportunity, they were prepared. Laura was prepared. She was financially disciplined. She was creative and she had faith and she did exactly, she exhibited the qualities that each and every one of us as entrepreneurs are supposed to exude. And that is pure leadership. And then lastly, Laura said, our team is our boss. For real, for real. Our staff 
is the boss. They are the ones that are really the, 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 the heroes of the businesses. Yes, we come up with the ideas. Yes, we're the money makers. But in the end, we're nothing um, without our teams. And if you don't have that concept, then more than likely you're trying to operate your business as a one man band or you didn't retain your employees during the pandemic. Um, so, Laura, any last minute words before we go? Oh, guys, head over L and B underscore concepts. Um, follow them on Instagram. Hounder, guys, go and check out what rental stuff. Summertime is coming. Um, you might want to, you know, get down. Fourth of July is coming. Events. We're still social distancing. So, you know, be mindful that you can rent your equipment and stuff from Laura. And, you know, do your events at home throughout the summertime. So, Laura, any last minute things that you want to leave us tonight? You can bring any dream to reality. Wow. Oh, that was it. Guys, tonight's show was absolutely amazing. What, like Laura said, you can bring all your dreams to reality, guys. Let's go out and kill it because right now the economy needs entrepreneurs like ourselves to create businesses, well, to create jobs and create opportunities. We cannot rely on the government because the secret is the government really relies us and y'all don't understand. So just like Laura's situation with the PPP, e PPE supplies, we were doing the loans and helping the businesses sustain. So without all of us service providers stepping up and saying, hey, we're here to help. Hey, what opportunity is there? then I don't think we would have been able to recover the way that we did, Laura. So pet yourself on the back, mama. You didn't fund the government. Merlin was, he was, he was showing off, Laura. He owe you that one big time. He was showing off. He was tooting his little horn. Um, so no, I'm so excited. I enjoyed tonight's show, Laura. Um, yeah, you have an amazing night and we look forward to all the content that we're going to be posting out from tonight's show. I don't know. I think my team's going to go crazy. They're like, where do we stop? Like, it's just, Point after point after point after point. So, Lord, thank you so much for tonight. And we appreciate you great gracing us with your presence. Thanks for having me. And stay yes. with you. Yes. All right, guys. That's it. The first episode of the Money Zone on Rip Radio Network, season three. I'm your host, Felicia Day, the accountability accountant, guys. We had Laura of Ellen. I don't want to put her last name. I should have asked her. Ellen B. Concepts. Head over and follow her. Nag her. Order her supplies. Um, order her equipment, guys, and just go and support our fellow entrepreneurs. And if you guys have any questions at all, um, post your questions or comments under these videos. And don't forget to tune in on ripradionetwork.com and tune in each and every Tuesday at 7 p.m. See you guys next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>